This isn't a guide. I don't recommend doing it. And if you brick your camera trying to do what I'm about to do today, I do not take any responsibility for it. Thank you to Wasabi Power for making this hackery possible. Today we're exploring a crazy idea I had with my Mamiya ZD. This is the first medium format DSLR ever produced. It's probably the rarest camera in my collection. Back in 2006, it cost $12,000. Nowadays you can buy one for two to $3,000, which is still a ton of money. So if what I'm about to do today makes you cringe a little bit, I don't blame you. Uh, just know that I'm pretty sure this is, will not damage the camera. I'm pretty sure about that. Let me explain the idea. One of the really cool and even unique features about this camera are these removable filters that go in in front of the sensor behind the mirror. And they come in little cartridges like this to protect them from dust and protect the sensor from dust. And by using a little combination of kind of sticking it in down here and some buttons and knobs and switches, you can remove and put back in filters without them ever seeing the daylight, without them ever getting dust on them. Now, some newer mirrorless cameras are coming up with filter systems like this that allow you to put filters behind the lens in front of the sensor. But what makes this very different, other than the fact that it's doing it as a DSLR, is that supposedly, from what I understand and I've read, there is no actual IR cut filter adhered to the sensor itself like there is on virtually every other camera. So if you wanna shoot an infrared on another camera, you have to pay someone to rip that off the sensor to allow infrared light to pass through. But with this camera, from what I understand and what I'm hoping is that that only is in these little removable filters. So if there was a way to remove this filter from off the sensor and still take a photograph, we should be getting infrared light, which would mean infrared photography on a medium format camera and be able to switch back to normal photography just like that, which is pretty cool. And this is not too unlike early Sigma DSLRs like this one, the Sigma SD10, which actually come with a removable IR cut filter in front of the mirror itself. So if you remove this, then you can shoot in full spectrum. Now they advertise it as really a dust filter to keep dust from getting in the camera, but like it's way cooler than that because you can shoot full spectrum and then go back to shooting totally normally without converting a camera. But the Mamiya ZD has a problem. It will not shoot without that filter in place. There's some sort of sensor in the camera that's detecting whether or not that filter is in place. And if you take one out, it won't shoot. Mamiya only ever came out with two filters for this camera, an IR cut filter like this one and a low pass filter, which is a low pass filter plus an IR cut filter. So either way, you're cutting out IR light. Interestingly enough, the sibling of the Mamiya ZD, the Mamiya ZD digital back, which was just a back designed for film bodies, actually did come with a removable IR pass filter. So they had it for that system, but they never produced one for this system. My idea is to buy a spare one of these cartridges on eBay, somehow remove the IR cut filter from within this cartridge, but keep the framing or whatever else is around the cartridge itself so that I can insert that into the camera. It'll detect that as if there was a filter there and allow me to take a picture, which would allow me to take some beautiful artistic full spectrum images on this old CCD medium format camera, which will just be super cool. And I feel like this should work. Hey, quick pro tip, before you buy an old digital camera like the Mamiya ZD, make sure that you can find new batteries for it available on wasabipower.com. Because if you can't find new batteries for your old digital camera, if these batteries go toast or, or like mine is cracked open, which is a little alarming, then you're toast. And I don't even really want to think about not being able to use this camera. I've actually gotten myself into trouble with this on more than one occasion. Here's a Fujifilm camera I really want to try. I bought it on a whim for 10 bucks and it's super cool. Look at that. On the back, it looks like a freaking film camera. But they don't make batteries for these anymore either. It was just such a one-off battery. I actually might have a lead on this one. In this case, there's a Sony battery that might work. So more on this camera later, hopefully. Just general good old camera buying advice. Make sure you can buy fresh batteries before you start investing in a system. And then when you do pick up new batteries for your old digital camera, just buying through Wasabi Power makes sense anyway. You get free fast shipping in the United States and say something was to go wrong with the battery, even a year down the road or something, it's defective, you can get free replacements which is really nice and comforting. Also, I have a coupon code in the description so you can save 10% off your next purchase. Okay, let's get back to hacking. The first step was to find a spare filter cartridge I could use. I didn't want to modify mine and only be able to shoot in infrared, but be able to swap 
in between the two of them, ideally, was my idea. But finding one of these on eBay for a good price was proving difficult and time consuming. So I ended up just lowballing offers from Japan and someone accepted and I got this one for $53.50 with tax and shipping included, which is a small price to pay for a medium format infrared conversion. Although it's a lot of money to pay if this doesn't work at all. The filter was new in box and beautiful to look at actually. I kind of feel bad destroying a little piece of history like this, but uh, I suppose these will probably just end up in a landfill anyway. Now I need to see what it looks like on the inside of this. And it turns out there's a lot of mechanisms here that are preventing the filter from coming out unless this is attached to the camera. But with a little bit of fiddling, there it is. One thin piece of glass standing in the way of my glorious infrared images. Also, look how huge this filter is. That's the size of the sensor. Being kind of careful here, I put on gloves and went to work. I thought that maybe the filter was just pressure fitted. After all, I couldn't see anything physically holding it. So I tried to pry it with my screwdriver and, oh, oh shoot. Well, that didn't work. After deciding it was probably glued on somehow, I tried using a hairdryer to release the glue, but that didn't work either. After some more study that probably should have occurred before I did anything to the filter itself. I noticed a thin metal casing around the whole frame with little tabs to come off. The tabs were much too small even for a tiny screwdriver, but I was able to open them using a razor blade. And this actually worked and the filter came out with just a little bit of adhesive. Aha, gotcha. Now that I have the filter out and the cartridge intact still, I'm super excited because I think this is gonna work, but I still don't know how the camera is gonna react to having a dummy cartridge in there. Is it gonna let me take a picture or not? And is there some more infrared filters on the sensor itself that I don't know about? One final touch on the cartridge itself so I can uh, tell it apart from my other one. And let's take this outside right now and test. <laughs> it's shot. And we got purple images. It's working. This is so cool. This totally works and I'm stoked because it basically means I have a full spectrum, a non-permanently modified full spectrum medium format DSLR for $53.50. But there are some important caveats to this modification. Without that thick piece of glass there for the filter, the autofocusing system does not work. It's not accurate because it's designed to focus on a certain plane and that plane has now changed slightly. And this is the same whether or not I'm using manual focus through the viewfinder as well. It's just not going to be accurate. And besides the fact that infrared light actually focuses at a different plane through this lens or any lens than visible light, and you're kind of doing a little bit of guesswork with focusing on a DSLR camera. It's kind of a different story with mirrorless cameras with the live view and how their focusing system works. And with DSLRs that are professionally modified, they actually adjust the focusing for you. So I don't have either of those things here. And then the metering system on this camera is not gonna work either because of the way that DSLRs meter. It's not metering off of the sensor itself and with the light that's hitting that, it's metering based on what it can see and it's basing that off of visible light, which you throw in IR light and you just get whack results. So in this mode, this camera becomes a manual focus, manual exposure kind of camera, but this is a non-permanent conversion. So as soon as I wanna go back to shooting visible spectrum only, I just swap the filter again and I'm back to normal. Hey, do you like old digital cameras like these? Like photographing with them, using them today? Then I think you'll really like this video I'm gonna post right here. I'll see you over in that one. And until next time, as always, happy snapping.